Oh, look at that. We're off to a fantastic start. Didn't even uh, take the, the mask off the screen. There I am. Yeah. It's probably it's probably better like that, but there, there we go. Uh, welcome. It's the ProSynth Network live show. It is definitely live. Uh, it's episode 210. It's April the 12th. It's almost Christmas. Um, the year is flying by. Um, but thank you for joining us, and uh, welcome to the show, wherever you're from. And I hope you've had a fantastic week since last we met. I don't know whether that was last friday on last week's show whether you hung around for the live stream that we did on tuesday to talk about the arturia astro lab um which was a lot of fun and i hope you uh, you enjoyed that and if you missed it it's on the channel go and watch it um it's it's good fun it's an interesting thing um but we won't be talking too much about that time because we do have some very very special guests um and we're going to be talking about pretty much one thing and one thing only or, or one group of things um so before we do that, of course, we do need to get through the uh, the usual housekeeping stuff. So as always, um, it would be fantastic if you gave us a like uh, and gave us a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment, of course. You can, uh, if you're watching this on catch up, you can leave the comments down below. If you're watching live, you can stick them into the chat, and we will see those. Um, give us a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. That would be really nice because it does help promote the channel around and the algorithms and all that stuff. And if you know somebody who doesn't watch this show regularly and you think that they might actually enjoy this thing, of course, send them the link. That would be fantastic. Um, also, if you want to support us, you can do that in a number of ways. The Probably the best way to do it now is through our Patreon page. And Patreon, um, we've set that up as a base level $2.00 a month subscription and that gets you access to the page and everything that we put there on it which includes uh sample packs for instruments patches patch libraries for other instruments exclusive content as and when it comes in we just this week threw up a whole bank of sounds from the wonderful james dyson who uh, does a lot of patchwork for uh cherry audio amongst other things and this one was for the cherry audio gx80 so there's a big bank of sounds right there that you would normally have to pay 10 British pounds for. And he gave us that pack absolutely free of charge to give to our Patreon and YouTube members uh, free of charge. So go and fill your boots. And of course, that is the other way that you can support us is through YouTube channel membership. Again, um, we've chosen like the lowest possible tiers, like $2.99, I think, or whatever. Same sort of thing. You just join up there, and when we give out free stuff, you're first in line to get it. So that's really cool. And thanks to James and to Mark and to everyone else that's donated material to us over the last few months to give to the community. It's um, it's brilliant that we're able to do that, and of course it encourages uh, membership, and, and your membership keeps the channel going, which is fantastic. So yeah, you can join us at patreon.com forward slash ProSynth Network, or you can join us as a YouTube member. Both pretty much get the same sort of benefits. Um, if you want to follow us on social media, we're across all of those, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, Threads, X, and of course here on YouTube, which I think where most of you are uh, today and during the week anyway. So um, give us a follow, give us a like over there. And um, if you have any questions throughout the show, and I'm sure that there will be many, um, don't be afraid to ask them. Stick them into the, the chat, whether it's on YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or X, I think, are the four platforms that you can communicate with us through. But when you do, make sure you put a big capital Q at the front of your question. And that just helps us old men with bad eyes see them and put them into the right place so that we can come uh, back to them at a more appropriate time. So um, thank you for doing that. And that'd be great. And of course, our moderators are in the chat. Ben from Musings and Yay. Andy Brooks. And I'm not entirely sure. I didn't see uh, Andy Synth Addict, but he generally pops in at some point. But thank you to our moderators um, for your fantastic work. There won't be too much linkage to put up in the chat today because we're kind of just talking about one main thing. Um, but um, yeah, thanks for everything that you do. And if you are uh, in the chat and intent on causing a ruckus, they'll kick your ass out. Simple as that. Um, so uh, Andrew Brooks has got the first question. Is my T-shirt ready yet? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Um, I don't know when I'm going to see you to give it to you, but uh, there is there is a T-shirt there for you. Um, I hope it's the right size. But yes, we've got one. I should put it aside. Don't worry. 
um, and there will be more merch coming soon. I will, I promise I will get around to it and sort that out. Anyway, thanks to everyone for joining. Hello to everyone in the chat. I shan't name you all, but uh, thanks to everyone that's there. We've got the wonderful Dina Perlman uh, from the Alan R. Perlman Foundation. She's in there. Um, we've got Lady Aptitude, Wookiee. Uh, we've got uh, Viral Beats and uh, Steve, a.k.a. Ixorb. And who else have we got? Of course, we've got Brooksy and uh, Ben from Musings, Koshtakai, Culture of Ghosts, Jason Crouch, Git Martins, and so on and so forth. If I named you all, I wouldn't have enough time to do the next bit of the show where I'd bring in my uh, my faithful sidekicks who uh, help me out every week. Uh, first of all, let's bring in, um, bring in the old guy that came in late. <laughs> I was working. Per. I was oh, working. Right. All right. What, were you, what were you working on? I, I was buffing. You were buffing a mini mug, uh, weren't you? You're yes, looking I pretty was. buff. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been out in the sun. We that's had just some. The, that's the French polish. It's not a tan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yes, no. I've been buffing today, amongst other things. So um, I I cannot stress enough that people should not ever, ever, lack a, a mini mug case, or I will come for them. <laughs> Seriously, I will come for them. <laughs> <coughs> and I will sort them out. Well, you, you, you're you doing a fine service to the Minimo community. <coughs> Getting paid as well. Absolutely. Which is, um, yes, is, is uh, a good topic for today. Mm. Um, the other voice that you heard there in the background was my other faithful sidekick. Um, some know him as Tonto. We just know him as um, Land Rover. <coughs> Mr. Andrew Longhurst. <laughs> and the Penguin of Death. And the Penguin of Death. <laughs> and the Penguin of Death. How good are evening. you all? Uh, very well. How are you? I'm, I've had a bit of a day today. My right? my cat got hit by a by a oh, car. Oh, I saw yesterday. Mr. Evans. Yeah, wow. yeah. He's back out. He's back out of the cat hospital now. He's um, he's had lots of stitches and he's wandering around. He can't go out because he'll get oh, his breath. bless him. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's sort of mewling and so, <laughs> dad, dad. Yeah, but we've got him back. He's fine. Good. So yeah, it's all something. it's it's all good. Yeah. My all my cat well. did. I think something quite similar. He he ran out of the road into the side of a uh, funnily enough a land rover um and i think the land rover did come off worse but yeah my my fella he, he was just a little bit dazed and confused and then um we took him to the vets and he he paraded around there like um that's what he did yeah, yeah. the yeah. cock of the walk yeah. as they say but anyway um yeah, glad to hear mr evans is, is good yeah. in fine He's fettle much better Thank you. Yeah, good, 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 good stuff. Um, so thank you, gentlemen. Um, I'm now going to bring in our very, very special guest. We don't have just one. We don't have two. We have three, three. amazing, amazing wow. people to talk about something very, very special. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure which order. Shall I go top, bottom, bottom, top? I think I'll go top, bottom. That's what we'll do. We'll go to the founder of the wonderful organization, the wonderful company from Denmark uh, called Bukes, uh, Mr. Kim Bjorn. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to have <laughs> you. Thank you for ha that introduction, Rob. No, you're more than welcome. How are you? I'm glad it's being recorded. I'm fine, thank you. I'm a little <laughs> bit uh, excited. I, I'm excited about this. It's really great to be on the show, and thank you for that. Is it is it a kind of a relief now to, to actually be able to talk about this thing that you've oh, been keeping yes. under your hat? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a relief. Good, good. Yeah. Good. Well, that's it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and I hope, well, you know, it will be a cracking success, I'm sure. Um, but we'll talk about all of that in just a little while. Um, I think then we maybe need to go to the man that wrote the book, um, who I wasn't expecting to join the show, and I'm absolutely over the moon that he has. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give a big, big ProSynth Network round of applause to the wonderful Joe Silva? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Joe. Hi. Thanks for having us. And um, uh, how are you today? Are you well? Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, it's a sunny spring day and here in the south, and Love you know, it. I just had to wipe the pollen off the cat and uh, <laughs> <laughs> able to join you in time. Excellent stuff. Well, look, it's it's a real honour to have you on the show. Um, I can't wait to read your work. I've had uh, some images that that Kim sent through, and I've been sort of squinting trying to sort of get get a taste of of what's in there. But it looks like an amazing uh, thing that you have uh, been you know responsible for, and um, can't wait to speak to you more about it in the next hour or two. Thanks. Um, right, and then lastly, but by no means least, he's a friend of the show. He's a tour de force, and there are other things that I would like to say, but we're before the <laughs> nine o'clock watershed. 
It is the one and only Dr. Mike Metley. There we go. Hi, all is the Ministry of Computer, which is Danish for hello, all you nice people in the computer. He can't help himself. Not quite. He just can't help himself. (laughs) Kim, my mispronunciation of Danish is has been a running joke with Kim and me for 20 years. (laughs) <laughs> and it just well it feels like 20 years it was actually probably only 10 anyway how is everybody they're all very well how are you it's been a while oh well it has and you know i love the network and i'm i'm uh i'm doing okay actually good um <clears throat> tired because i i don't know <laughs> if you guys know but i've been working on this book um and it does that to you yeah it does but yeah. it's been it's been great fun and good, good. um you know all all good here excellent stuff brilliant right let's get a full house we'll do the um celebrity squares thing oh look at that it's, it's even ordered itself with all of us psn is on the top and our guests on the bottom that's fantastic wow. um technology oh yes. oh yes excuse me from chat we have been working on this book big <laughs> shout out to diana smethers gypsy witch who is our trusted <gasps> copy editor you know, that was going to be my next that was going to be my next question how is she because um we met we've met a few times but we had a nice long chat at synthfest in uh, in sheffield last october um she was telling me about this new album that came out in in honor of her her late husband and and how is all that going and but anyway yeah. um, her her charity album has been doing very well Excellent. and um she'll throw a link into chat if that's Please permissible do. Um, she's basically working on planting old growth trees in the yeah. UK in honor of her late husband, whom we miss terribly. And she's doing fine, working hard. Um, and uh, as opposed to me, I'm hardly working. Um, and um, I, it. I, I know I said it. So, yeah, she sends best regards to everybody, and I'm sure she'll have something to add in chat. And we'll send them right back. Excellent stuff. Brilliant. I feel, I feel quite remiss here because I don't have, like, you, got, you guys have all got, Bukes books and, and I was going to get them, but they, everything's at an angle and they won't stand up behind me. So mm-hmm. um, I have I have Bukes books in my bookcase, but it's not here. So um, if like, you haven't bought worry. a Bukes book, get one because they are brilliant things. Um, I've they're, got they're, some space. I've got some space. Yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful things. Um, yeah. And get a of heavy course, bookshelf. Get a heavy bookshelf. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> And and the reason we are here is because um, on Wednesday it was finally announced what the new Bukes book is, and I should have been prepared. I should have had a picture ready to go. Here it is. I'm just going to throw it up on screen, um, and we'll talk about it in depth. But this is the brand new book that is coming from Bukes in that wonderful, lovely square format and those big, thick covers and those lovely, glossy pages that smell amazing but contain amazing words and pictures. And you can see we've just there's a selection just there. This is the Mini Moog book. Um, the Mini Moog book. I don't think there's ever been a publication dedicated, certainly not in this uh, depth and quality, uh, on what is probably the, the most important, influential uh, synthesizer of all time i think that would many yeah. people would would fail mm. to to argue against that um i'll fight them if they try um but this has been written uh, as we uh, said earlier by by joe it's got a forward by geddy lee no less it's been edited by mike metley and it's been um put into you know the world by of course kim whose company is, is that, that produces these things so um i guess i don't know where to start i mean there's so many questions we, we can start with but um i think i'll go to kim first because he's the boss he gets paid enough to take the first question yeah. um <laughs> give it to the, him well it's the, ob- it's it's the obvious like the obvious first question why this mm. book why what was the inspiration behind this book you know, it's it's a really good question, and I wasn't expecting that at all. Well, no. <laughs> um, why this book? Because mostly because you know, um, Joe uh, approached me at some point, or we got connected. But also um, because it's super important, as you say, it's, it is the synthesizer that changed music forever, and it's just become really a passion project for all of us, and not just for Joe, but also for Mike and I. And you know, I believe this is so important. Uh, 
to to get out there because there's so many stories. I've learned a lot, mm-hmm. you know, going through all these interviews and pages. And I think it's it's really important to also what we do, if I can say so, at Bukes is we also try to how to say, you know, gather the puzzle pieces basically. You know, mm-hmm. get all the info in there and and present it in a way so that people can uh, how can you say get a good overview, but also go in depth. Um, and you can only watch so many YouTube videos from different creators <laughs> and all that stuff. You know? Absolutely. Uh, sorry about that. We're on a YouTube show, I know, but um, no, no, you know no. what I mean, right? So, so that that's that's why there are so many pages. That's why the square format. That's what accommodates these uh, things we try to preserve and and move forward into the world because there's yeah. going to be future generations. No, who wants to know about the minimal goals? So not just yeah. from an, an app or you know. So I think it's an important, super important story to tell. And there's so many, you know, we have so many photographs in there. We'll get, I know we'll get to that, but it's mm-hmm. never been shown before. And I'm super excited that we can, we can do that actually. Yeah. That we've chosen to do that. Yeah, but absolutely. Rob, I have to say first also that we talk about that the book is written, the book is edited and put together. It's not yet. It's not at all <laughs> done yet. We are not done yet, as I say. Sure. There's there's so much. There's not so much, but we are like eighty, ninety percent there. Mm-hmm. But we have a Kickstarter coming up, and I think that's yeah. my most important message. Sure. Uh, but we yeah. can get back to that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll, we'll cover mm. that um, at some point. So I guess if I come to the author next. Um, yeah, you know, what was it about the Minimo Joe that inspired you to write this? I mean, are you a, a, a long term user of a Minimo, uh, or was it a case of wanting, as Kim says, to to get the story out there in its is, as much in its entirety as possible? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I've been a sort of a technology, music technology journalist for a long time, and back in 2003 or four, I can't remember precisely, I met uh, Bob Moog on an assignment for Sound on Sound. Okay. And um, that kind of got me into sort of being super aware of how important, uh, you know, the the Moog history is Mm. because they're they're just three hours up the road in in Asheville. So I wound up uh, writing a lot about Moog products and then writing doing some work for Moog uh, writing some of the, the brochures and uh, things that that go into the instruments and then at uh, some point we just had a conversation about oh I think it was the 40th anniversary was coming up okay. uh, the mini Moog and we got talking about doing doing some articles uh, to commemorate that mm-hmm. and um, from there it just became it's like well you know this is the story is far too long and, and, and too complex, and we should just think about doing a, a, a full, like, proper book. And um, and that sort of kicked off the, the, the journey for me. Mm-hmm. And what what is it about the Mini Moog that you think is so special? Why, why, why does it have such a, a place in, in synthesizer history and, and music history in, in general? Well, that, that's the thing is that once once I started down the road, it, it's just kind of it's like a Fender guitar. It's everywhere. Mm. It's yeah. just it's there's just I think Kim and I were putting together a, a Spotify or a YouTube list to, to accompany the book and some of the multimedia stuff that we're going to be doing. And it's just you could just go on and on. It's it's just the, the onion that you can never completely peel. Yeah, it, it's just an, on so many important pieces of music. And, and through you know just so many different genres so it, it became super exciting just the, the the kinds of people that i was speaking to and just the diverse range of artists that that used it and and just felt so passionate about it and and and, and hang had hang, hung on to you know the ones that they had for decades and, mm. and so it's a it's just very a very deep subject you know and as a writer that that's what you want you want something that that just continually just feeds that yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's now come to the the editing part, um, Mike. I'm going to ask you uh, this question. You, uh, as Kim said, you're still in the process of doing this, but you're almost there. When it comes to editing a book that about a subject that is so important and so huge, what? How difficult is it to make those decisions about what you have to to cut? and edit out of the book because it maybe just goes 
a little too deep and might lose interest with the the, the reader or yeah, what, how tough is it to make those those kinds of decisions well <clears throat> it is a difficult process um the uh <clears throat> this book has taken well over a year to put together um and we've been back and forth about getting a good balanced um approach to this and one thing uh, uh diana just put it very uh succinctly in uh uh in chat um uh, she said uh you can't write a definitive book on the mini mode uh you can write a very good one with most of the stuff in and i think that's that's really the mm -hmm. point we know there are going to people go, be people out there who say why didn't you interview this artist why didn't mm. you interview that artist why didn't you talk more about the mini in this genre or that genre um you know why are you wasting time on this mini mode <laughs> when you could have spent more time on that mini mode and we just have to sort of gird our loins and say you know we're not going to get all of this in there but mm -hmm. we're really proud of the breadth and the depth of what we have managed yeah I, i'm really looking forward to it but um one of the things with the mini moog that is not always the case with um certainly you know important iconic synthesizers and there aren't many i guess truly iconic synthesizers and i guess the mini moog is the most iconic but with the mini mode, there are lots and lots of different variations or versions. There's there, this, it has this long history of you know the original units and then the units that were built in different factories and the, the units that were built by different versions of, of the Moog company in, in all of its various forms. And then, of course, there's the Welsh ones and then the new ones and then there's a the software and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to come to our resident tech because he has all sorts of mini modes passing through his hands um, and on his workbench. Mm. And um, I just you know, want to get sort of like an insight from you, Kent, about the, all the different types of mini mode there are and, and what your thoughts are on each of them and which are the nicer ones and the not so nice ones, the ones that you should treasure above all else. Oh, man. Um, it's very similar to trying to make a definitive book here. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's been so many different um variants not necessarily um ha having their origins at from moog directly mm. um the welsh ones i've seen welsh ones that were um at least as far as the dimensions of the case were concerned were were fine and then others that were sort of like you know two inches too wide mm. and things and in too deep and you had a shelf where you could literally stand a coffee cup in front of the keyboard <laughs> on the case and stuff like this um generally the the, the general um uh, idea is that the best mini moogs were the first 150 or so the, the, the definitely the you know the ra's this is how people perceive it that the, the first ones were you know it you know the the golden age for them Tiny that, uh, would disagree with you. Tiny oh God, yeah, I yeah. know, I know. Um, th this is this is based on what people say to me about it. But are you saying they're best because they technically, from a sonic perspective and a build perspective, they're the best, or because those were the best because they were the first? Well, th you see, there wasn't much changed really in terms of um, like the VCO boards, for instance, what was used on the VCO boards and the VC and the VCFs going from RA to Musonics anyway. Yeah. So they would be sounding the same. So the only thing that was kind of making the RA special um, was like, uh, I think it was Michelle told me about, I think she said about the first 80 or 90 mini mugs were made from trees out of his back garden. Mm. And it's a lovely wood and it really, really comes up well. Um, whereas, the, you know, the wood they use on the cases towards um 77 70, 78 and 79 it was oh, it's awful um it's like balsa wood it's horrible stuff to work with um so that, but that but that's the thing about the mini mug it wasn't just about the sound mm. it was about you know 
the aesthetics and everything else about that the whole machine because yeah I, I think it was uh yeah it was me me richard, richard hilton sitting down one night and we were trying to define what a mini moog actually was and we come to the conclusion it's um a very limited mono synth but what it does is the best that you can get in anything right so everything that it does is you can't get better than that yeah that's it that's it that's boom you know the mm -hmm. the best best that it can be yeah absolutely. but like i said there's been variations uh on the vc on the vco boards um there were certain fets that they used on the very 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 early ones that people say oh yeah it just makes it grittier you know warmer mm. uh and you know across the filter and stuff like this and it's, um, Every, everybody's got an opinion it means yeah. something different to you know everybody has their own thing that they bring from it yeah you know there's no generalization you know like we get with digital where all the keyboards are you know identical yeah. to each other yeah there's minis you know just their own characters yeah basically absolutely yeah absolutely nice one thank you um mm. so because i don't want him to feel left out I'm going to ask Andrew a studio technical based question. It's Andrew, you've you've worked inside many um, land, uh, sorry, uh, studios uh, over your time. Um, sorry, in joke. Um, um, how often was the Minimo used during you know, your time in these studios, and and what was what was its effect in the studio on the players and the sound and the, you know the, the quality of what was coming out. He's muted. Uh, let's unmute him. I can't unmute him. Take He's a drink. Gone. Everyone, uh, take a drink. Mm. That's a really, that's a really interesting question. Um, I guess um, the reason the mini moog, I, I, I'll, I will cover this, but the the reason the mini moog has become such an icon is that generation after generation that experience it for the first time, whether that's in a studio or in someone else's setup. It, you you cannot when someone first plays with it you cannot get over just how simple everything is how immediate and tactile and visually you can see exactly what's going on just by you know it's a very simple thing but god the sound it makes right the sound it makes is astonishing and it immediately you know almost anything you do with it you'll go that's a mini mooc and you'll you'll almost immediately think of a dozen or a, or a score of different tracks it's been used on to do one thing or another. So that and that's you know it's become like the kind of toolkit. You know, artists will have a certain um, you know a certain brush they prefer to work with in whichever media they're using. They'll have their own you know, their camel hair brushes or whatever. And you know, other people will use things for chipping wood. They'll have their tools that they always come back to. And you know, you can get fancy ones and electric ones and whatever, but the tools you come back to are the ones that work. That's what the mini moog is. It's a tool mm. that that allows you to create expressively in all sorts of ways. And I, the artist, I mean, I've worked with Mike Oldfield. Loved it. Um, um, I've worked with a bunch of R and B people. Um, you know, all sorts of different people, hip hop artists so many people that just loved the sound and it was kind of and it still is to a certain extent one of those essentially must-haves um mm. and and it always bought something it was always kind of if you've got the moog in the studio then you know it's a serious session yeah you know it's a proper session and you know you've got some real musos and it's going to be something something special yeah. is going to come out it, it is um it is a unique instrument. I mean, I know there are common synthesizers that a lot of people use, but the Mini Moog seems to transcend that and is just used everywhere in every genre of music, even outside of traditional electronic music. You know, the Mini Moog has appeared, you know, in prog rock and in jazz and fusion and, and all. It just seems to kind of just transcend any limitation of genre. Not that there should be any limitation, but it does. It, it, it just appears everywhere. And it's almost this iconic image that everybody knows exactly what that is. If you silhouetted the Mini Moog, you'd still know it was a Mini Moog. It's that ingrained in our culture, I guess, uh, that it's just this amazing thing. And I guess that popularity and that importance was, you know, one of the big reasons, Kim, that you you, you felt really compelled to, to write this. Or put uh, it together, at least, shall I say. Yeah. yeah, to publish it, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. And also, you know, because there's, there's different things here that I, I like to comment on. One is this talk about the sound and someone was already commenting on, you know, the news that the book is coming out that, oh, it's the most boring sound. It's been heard so many times or whatever, <laughs> you know, and what was really interesting to me when I sat down, you know, I've never played a mini Moog before we started this project. And and that's the you really? shame on me, you know. Yeah, that's that's right actually. And I've never sit, been sitting down with a 1972 mini mode. The very first one he touched was serial number one. Oh well, yeah. if you're going to do it, do it like yeah, that. Yeah, if you're going to do yeah. it, go big. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and and what so, was your experience um, of that? How did you feel when you first played your first mini mode? What what did it do for you? What did it? It what was interesting was actually that it took just a few minutes when I was like, ah, this is much more than the sound. It is really a performance synthesizer also. Mm, mm. You know, that's that's really what's come to me with this. You know, it is, you know, why it's heard in so many genres. It's like a guitar, as also um, yeah. Joe said in the beginning. It's not just the sound. It's also that it's it was so usable and it was used to double bass sounds also in hip hop and other stuff. Mm -hmm. It was used to play lead solos. It was used to, to lay down chords even. There's so many use cases already in those early 70s that are just yeah. incredible and that we can learn a lot from i think on how yeah. to use such a, a seemingly simple instrument and yeah i think that's super interesting yeah. and and for me that's you know all these little things that the artists reveal in their in the interviews about how they made a certain sound on a certain album um and we there's albums like uh, what you know thriller Dr. Gray, there's all sorts of stuff. And yeah. I think it's that notion that it's like it's it's really a useful tool also. It's not just a, it's a cool sense or something. It's, it's at that time it was also how can we do this? How can we get that base up deeper, you know, more bottom end? How can we, you know, double this guitar solo and make it more, you know, come forward or whatever. Yeah. I think I think that's super interesting from a like a production perspective. You learn a lot from that thing. Mm. There guess, is, oh, go, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, you know, I guess a lot of this is also about, we talk often about how, from a creative point of view, having a constrained system, having a limited system, is actually, mm. it actually forces you to be way more creative. And the Mini Moog, I mean, w when you talk about these things, there's, f for synthesizers, it's the Mini Moog, for, for organs, it's the B3, for pianos, it's the Steinway, you know, D. Uh, uh, it's 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 that they're, they're simple they work and but they're constrained and so you work harder with them and you get more creative because of that mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry kim do you 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 can add to that uh there was just one thing that um about uh, about the oscillator boards and all that and i just want to say there's there's i think that's one of the things we're trying to do with this book also like demystify all these stories about the minimo that that people have from everywhere basically so mm -hmm. we're really trying to go back to the source and 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 both uh joe and mike can talk more about that sure. um but also you know we're gonna have um what do you call it visual explanations like almost infographical mm -hmm. uh show what actually went on from oscillator board version one in in the early one and then version two from 72 and up and then you know january 74 or oh, that's the that's actually the second version now mm -hmm. uh, you know what happened there about the relocation of of certain components and how the sound changed in version three mm -hmm. uh, which was in 79 i guess you know and it's just it's not that we state that something is better than something else it's just different uh, in, in in our eyes i think you can have a personal opinion as we talked about but for me as a publisher, it's super important, I think, to tell this kind of, you know, objective history about how were things actually, how do these things look inside? We talk about the sound, but how is it produced? You know, how does it work? Mm. How is this instrument actually played? Uh, yeah. I think that's super interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what was just said earlier uh, about the, you know, the, the fact that it was used in so many situations and and that it did you know it doubled up as a bass it could accompany a lead guitar and i remember there's there's a clip of um i think it's from the the first like moog documentary that uh, was uh, that featured bob before he passed um there's rick waitman bob bernie worrell 
somebody else I can't remember. And and Rick Waitman was saying that you know the 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 arrival of the Mini Moog meant that people like him, keyboard players, could now emerge from the back of the stage and have as much sonic presence as the guitarists or the vocalists. It was a real freedom giving instrument for for keyboard players who had you know traditionally been left or right of the stage towards the back you know behind a big Hammond organ or, or whatever it might have been and this was a real liberating thing both sonically and you know from from a stage presence uh kind of uh, thing um I want to come back to Joe um because one of the great things about the mini moog uh in my opinion anyway is is its sim- simplicity and that front panel and it's such the, the most beautiful design that Bob made where, you know, everything just moves from left to right and you can completely understand subtractive analog synthesis just by looking at this thing. It's it's an iconic design that has been replicated over and over and over in so many other synthesizers. And it still is relevant today. When I was teaching my son some years ago how to, you know, how, how analog subtractive synthesis worked, to have that layout was just so simple. How important was that design of, of that in, that front panel to the success of of the instrument? Yeah, I mean, I, there's so many people that I spoke to during the course of writing this book where they will say that having put their hands on on the Model D and just been able to basically teach themselves the, the fundamentals of how to shape a sound mm. um it, it, it's it's a key especially coming from the period where most people's awareness of moog or just synthesizer in general had to do with modulars and to have all of that sort of condensed into like you said a, a left to right uh layout that that pretty much anyone could get to grips with fairly quickly was just a massive game changer and Mm. and even though it it was still fairly pricey when it it, it arrived it made the 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 cost worth it to people who wanted to have such a a a modern uh sound and be able to get to grips grips with it so quickly yeah absolutely Mm. um i'm gonna show the launch video just to um Give us a little uh, breather. We can, we'll take a sip of a drink and uh, take a breath. Um, this is the launch video that came out just the other day. So this will give you a little bit more background on the very reason that we're here is to, to celebrate the, the launch of the Kickstarter for the Mini Moog book from Bukes. funky tune as well um that was you... kim by the way was it was it yeah, really it, yeah that was kim he awesome. wrote that awesome <coughs> big rant I, that deserves a cheer and a round of applause yeah. and, and, and maybe <coughs> give us some of that as well yeah, uh, well done that yeah. was very good very he good never gets enough credit as a musician he and i well, first met at a festival where he was performing as dream hub and one of my fondest peak experiences of my entire musical career was uh, an album that has yet to come out where he and I played the Copenhagen Cathedral at night. Oh, wow. No, he's an amazing musician and doesn't get to do it enough because he's got this whole book thing I know. going on the side. <laughs> well, this is fun, it? but could you hear the musical references on this? I there, wonder. There were one or two that little things I thought, that, that, that sounds a bit familiar. No, it was, that was great. It's a funky Good. little tune. You can make a um, twist later. Yeah, if you um if you want to sign up um to get all the information uh when the kickstarter launches later this month then all you've got to do is go over to um 
the uh, Bukes website, which is uh, quite simply um, Bukes.com. And then on the front page, that you'll see a link to it. But uh, you and can go there. You and can also use the links that Ben is posting in chat. Um, ben, uh, of course, he's already posted that in there. Um, so there we go. There's the book coming soon to Kickstarter. Just put your name and your email address in and just tick the little mandatory box and you'll get um, all the information as and when it comes out and when you can join in and support the book. And um, we'll talk to Kim in a little while about uh, you know the benefits of of Kickstarter and, and what you might get for you know uh, pledging early and all of that kind of stuff. I've already signed up. Yes. So um, I'm going to field some questions from the chat. Um, so let's see. Well, first of all, this isn't a question so much as a statement that I absolutely agree with. Uh, it's such a major synth of all synth. It kind of takes some balls to tackle writing a definitive book on the subject. And yes, it absolutely does. And I think we all know the quality of, of Joe's writing, of, of Kim's publishing, and of course, Mike's editing. We know that this is pretty much going to be... Um, a definitive book so um can't wait for that but uh ken flux please thank you very much thanks for for joining in all the way from america there um jason crash says during the research what was the weirdest prototype or mod that you found uh, i don't know who wants to take that one have a, have at it Oof. the weirdest I think joe one. maybe i mean the duracell mini that's up in Asheville. Um, uh, the Tom, it's Tom Coppola. It was the musician who who put together that famous Duracell commercial with that doom 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 tone. Uh, yeah. And and just to see that in person, it, it's pretty stunning because it's it's got all of these mods on it. We've got some great pictures in it uh, in the book uh, on yeah. that one. But that was you know it was it's very you know like I said it's very tweaked out. But it, it's also just the history of something that having heard that commercial growing up for, for decades that, yeah. was, wow, that this is where it came from. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, I'll add that, uh, that mini Moog actually was, um, modified by a fellow named Doug Slocum. Uh, Doug's a friend of mine and has been a nice resource for the book. Uh, I should also mention a friend of PSN, tiny Evans, mm -hmm. uh, who has another one of the few that Doug did. It was one of the ones that belonged to Manford man. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty amazing one. Yeah. There are some, uh, pretty exceptional examples of, I was hoping he was going to bring it here today, but he didn't. And I, I haven't heard from him yet. Oh, well, he's a busy man. He's a busy uh, man. Um, well, if he does bring it in, make sure you get to hang on to it until at least the following Friday. And then we can <laughs> have a look. Well, we'll know if he arrives anyway. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I would say also too, just really quickly that um uh last year i sort of around the fall got to go to up to emmy app in uh, philadelphia and just seeing the prototypes in person and yeah. just being able mm. to 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 see the model a was yeah. was something that was pretty mind-blowing as well so i'm just trying because kim very kindly today sent a load of extra because i got all the press stuff but then he said, I didn't me know where to stop, Rob. I'm sorry. About I, that. No, no. I mean, it was just a, I mean, a so minefield of stuff. Um, and I'm just, I'm going to pull up because unfortunately, this, the system's thumbnails are quite small. But I do remember seeing in there uh, pictures of some of the prototypes. And I'm just trying to, maybe I didn't load them up. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll get to them uh, shortly. But there are some amazing, as, as we have come to expect from a Bukes publication. Uh, it's not just the quality of the writing, which as a writer myself, I admire immensely uh, the people. Even Mike's writing is, is pretty damn good. Um, it pains me to say that. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, it, it's it's this stuff. It's the, it's the pictures, it's the images that you uh, get to put together. Um, I mean, we look at some of the pages of the book here um, and there's some amazing pictures. As you say, Kim, there's lots of pictures here that have never been seen before. Were, were there any that really stand out to you that we, we're all going to go, ooh, you know, that, that, that's an amazing oh, one we've never yes. seen? Many. I, a lot of the artist photos you see here, and that's one of the reasons we do the Kickstarter also. Some of these artist photos are found in, in some image libraries. Um, mm -hmm. But, of course, they all, you know, you have to license them and all that. No, this one, if you stay at this one, Yes. This is one I love. It's a, a you know it's an iconic photo of, of mm. the four 
the Voyager armies for the Daft Punk used in the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And it's it was published in in the magazine back then. Was it Future Music or something? Or oh, music yes. take, I'm not sure. And I just wanted to recreate that iconic, you know, spread and, and mm -hmm. went with that story also. So th this is an example of some of the artist features we have in the book, which are not full interviews, but but they spotlight artists from different genres and eras that have used uh, uh, different versions of the mini mooks. Mm -hmm. But I'd say, you know. Photo wise, and we can get back to that. That was actually going to Austria and photographing the serial number 1001. That's right. going to be something that nobody has ever seen in this quality and to this extent before. The same with the prototype, to be honest, that was photographed yeah. by Brian Redding in um, Limia. And we also I have to say, you know, we're really grateful about, you know, uh, for the collaboration from EMEA in um, Philadelphia and also yeah. from the Bob Moog Foundation in the Moxium. Yeah, and the e-board museum in austria because yeah. otherwise we couldn't you know having access you can actually go to the e-board museum in austria yes. and see the 1001 and you know it's, it's really worth preserving these places that preserve these units and take yeah. good care of them um so yeah, that's that's oh, what yeah. we really support also. yeah they, they do i'm important, glad to see michelle work. is in the chat also oh she's joined us amazing yeah. brilliant stuff i mean the one picture that or the one page that i think stood out to me because I think from my particular generation, certainly here in the UK, was this guy, and this was probably the first time I consciously heard a mini Moog. I'd probably heard stuff, you know, that, that Wakeman had been doing some years before, or, or other prog artists that occasionally came on the radio. But um, Gary Newman and and you know that that whole story, and, and I don't know, um, can any anybody confirm or deny that, that that story was that he just went into a studio saw a mini moog there and said i wonder what that is and pressed the key and it made this amazing sound and his his trajectory was forever changed it, it can yes that's true that's yeah. absolutely true yeah mm -hmm. so i mean what what a moment i mean and, and and again you know it kind of uh speaks to the fact that this this is a a, a life-changing instrument you know that it can change someone's career so you know it go, goes from you know predominantly guitar based post-punk band to the guy that kind of opened the door for all of these other electronic musicians that were sitting you know in sheffield in, in you know horrible little places around the country making electronic music and not getting heard and then he comes along and as you know in his own words I've, I've heard him say he he just all he did was open the door and let all of this stuff come through it was just but it was the mini Moog ultimately that was responsible for that, which you know is is fantastic. And and there's you know there's a bit a bit more of a close up. And what a picture! That's mm. just amazing. There's at least what three I see there, three mini Moogs, <laughs> probably more. Mm. Um, another page that caught my eye was my darling friend Tara or Tara Bush. I think she kills me if I says to, to say Tara. Um, Tara Bush. I mean that was amazing that you got her into the book because she is such. An incredible musician and uh, has always loved using Mo gear, uh, particularly the Voyage. I think is uh, is high on her list. But um, that was a great thing to see. And if you ever get the chance, I mean, she uh, played last night. She's been supporting, funnily enough, Gary Newman mm -hmm. um, again, and it was her last night supporting Gary on his uh, American tour uh, just last night. But if you ever get to listen to anything under the the name of I Speak Machine. Uh, her and her husband, Math, do this amazing thing. It's just brilliant stuff. She is a, a real tour de force. Um, who else in there can we expect to see? Because there's claims in the in the blurb of around 70 uh, artist interviews. So who, who are the highlights and who, who should we be looking out for? I think that's uh, Joe has some good suggestions here. But I could say just for me, mm -hmm. highlight, one of, some of the highlights are interviews with artists that are no longer around. But of course, Joe started yeah. this so long time ago, so that he has still these unpublished things. But Joe, yeah. this is this is for you. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to. Um, uh, I don't know. Let's see. I mean, every everyone knows that having an, uh, a chat with Rick Wakeman is great because he's hilariously <laughs> funny. Howard Lees from Heart was also mm -hmm. uh, fantastic to talk about. Um, uh, kind of actually made me a heart fan when I really wasn't before. Just going back and listening to how 
how fantastically those mini moog sounds were captured on on those records um but uh you know graham massey from 808 state oh, yeah. is, uh, had some great stories um uh roger roger manning from the moog mm -hmm. cookbook also um was good um uh, adrian utley from portishead had mm -hmm. some had some very good stories and um uh pointed out he had uh, at one point he had the the mini moog that had the big eyeball painted on it and you'll uh, use i think i'm pretty sure we have pictures of it in, in the book that we do that that no one seems to be able to know where it is at this point you know and he was he was telling me how he'd like to track that down again he let it go at some <laughs> point awesome mike were, were there any um interviews in in that book that that really stood out for you that uh, that we should all be looking out for well i'm a huge newman fan um mm -hmm. and um gary has talked about his first encounter with the mini Moog many times but it's good to have him in the book um <clears throat> there were some surprises uh, most people don't remember the 1970s yacht rock band mm -hmm. starbuck with their uh hit single moonlight feels right but if you if you go back and look at the band playing they've got they were a seven piece band and at one point i think in that song five of them were playing mini mogs were playing different parts wow um which is which is kind of slick what i've really enjoyed is we've got a lot of modern uh artists young hungry folks from around the world that are sort of just just getting known uh you know artists like nation of language um uh Yudugawa, um we have <laughs> um folks like uh fart barf who are a lot of fun <laughs> um and and some really great stories but you know from the 70s we have we we tick off all the, the major boxes we've got you yeah. hammer we've got chick Corea, cool. um and and just just a manford man of course and a lot of just a lot a, a lot of breadth which is really what i think people will appreciate naturally uh our stories lean heavily toward the 70s that's just you know the zeitgeist yeah, but yeah. we we've we come all the way into the 2020s and some of these new artists from around the world are pretty impressive yeah absolutely did you get to speak to will gregory at all um because he has the, the whole will gregory oh, moog oh, ensemble oh, oh, oh yes yeah yes. good yes. good yes. yeah yeah uh, if anybody if, if nobody's aware i mean you should be aware of the will gregory moog ensemble uh how many is it nine is it nine it's, it's it's quite a number isn't it of, yeah of, there's eight. Eight. either eight or ten plus a percussionist okay. mm, yeah, yeah yeah it's just like yeah all these mini mogs um being played brilliantly um and it's, it sounds incredible um lots of stuff on youtube uh, which you can go and watch after the show of course um but they're, they're great to great to hear that that's in there um of course you, you mentioned uh Newman Hammer, Tony Visconti as well um yeah. i i've never really yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that was more uh, you know a bowie thing um was was he a big user of um of well visconti the worked a lot with um with wakeman as well of course yeah so yeah. you know the, 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 i'm sure i'm sure he, you know, he yeah. he's always been a fan yeah absolutely because there is that, there's that wonderful picture of, of david there with the mini mo which is i uh, just i love david anyway but yeah. hmm. um yeah i can say stuff. rob with with um we actually have the reason we're still working on this book is things turn up all the time mm -hmm. and soon uh within a few weeks or so we're actually going to photograph uh two david bowie mini mocs in the uk uh, wow. luckily i have friends over there like you guys nice. but also others <laughs> nice. so that, that's the thing that the things turn up and you know I, 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 you know, be tempted to say that everybody knows someone who, who, who knows someone who has a mini or, you know, has yeah. owned one or whatever. Well, you know, most so. of us know Kent. <laughs> <laughs> who has a, has so, a few. Things turn up all the time like this. So yeah. that, that's super interesting also. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, talking of which, Kent actually sent me some photos. Um, yeah, I miss I misread the, um, the brief, didn't I? I accidentally sent you 200 photographs of different was, moogs. There's, there's it's just, just it's the just minis, loads of mugs. Yeah, um, but there were some rather there's shock. A, I mean, there's some rather beautiful pictures. Uh, there's a black of, one. You can see the black one. Yeah, I'm. I'm just trying to find it because that was the one I was looking for. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. I mean, while I'm looking for that, I mean, 
how many people's front rooms have one of those <laughs> have had one of those sitting uh sitting in there quietly just uh glowing in the dark that's um, Hans Zimmer's one it's, that's Hans's is it yeah oh, that's Hans's sure. one yeah uh, right, let me find this this black mini mug again. The, the the thumbnails are so small um, that I might struggle uh, to find. But I saw that and thought, oh my god, that's just that's a Whilst you're crime doing against it, humanity. I, yeah, please do. May I ask a question or two? Go um, for it. So, Mike and Kim and Joe, um, I I do. You know, I've got a video thing, a video company. I make videos. I, I do visual storytelling. And I'm really intrigued how you're pulling this together because the the thing with any sort of um, uh, narrative art is to find a story, to find something to hook it all on. And I, I can imagine, you know, I face this fairly often, but nothing like as much as you will, where you have so much material, it's kind of what do we, what do we use? We've already talked about, you know, how do you include it? What do you take out? What's relevant? How, how have you sort of navigated your way through that this this particular time? Because it is, you know, I'm really looking forward to this book, but I'd just love to know, um, you know, how how you're sort of grounding this, where 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 the centre of it, or is it mm. the synth itself, and then you're using stories to illustrate what you? How, how's that working? I can uh, chip in on that if, if you guys don't mind, um, because you know Joe came with this batch of interviews that were really interesting but uh and these this story we have the whole you know how it came to be um you know the bob story as i call it and then we have the voyager story later on also uh, which is maybe more bob story um but so there's these two how to say highlights or like bookends uh, almost yeah yeah almost like two different eras at least or but there's so much in between we we've discussed you know um chrono chronology uh, in this and um that's one way to sort things but as you know from all our books uh at least what i do is i like to mix things up and as, as i say we make books for people that also are fond of youtube <laughs> because you know it's not a book you read from one end to the other it's not a biography it's not you know uh, like huge lord of the rings where you start at 0, 0.0 um you can you can you can just browse the book anywhere you want and start from there basically mm. which is always um, the, the way with your books isn't yeah. it? It, it they are just you know dip in where you want you can do it cover to cover but they work as a, a coffee table yeah. book really don't they? yeah exactly yeah definitely and also but i think it's also about not getting you know we we have these stories that i think and, and joe can can talk more about that but that are really important to tell in their in entirety is that how you call it i think but then we have uh, we we have these like technical breakups if you can say so you know we even we have for example with the voyager we have a little feature we talked to axel hartman about this redesign of the, the base plate to make mm -hmm. it more uh you know ui friendly uh, on mm -hmm. the eye and um, so, so stuff like that is in there there's we you know we open up the minimo we open up the zero thousand and one and we use that as visual breaks, if you can, the pauses uh, in the in the book, um, because there's so many interviews. And maybe I should also say that uh, in the fall, when we hopefully release this book, that depends on the Kickstarter. You know, we really need you guys' support out there. Uh, but hopefully, when we release the book in the fall, we also open up something that for now is called the Bukes Club, which is online. And that's where we're going to put a lot of the stuff that we don't put in the book, that we don't have space mm. for, because otherwise oh, it's cool. an 800-page yeah. book. Mm. Yeah. So and it, cool when we get back idea. to the Kickstarter perks, we can, we can talk more about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I've but maybe Mike find... and Joe has something to say here. Also. Yeah, yeah, guys. Well, um, Joe has provided so much material um that as kim said we could hit 650 700 pages and still be going strong mm -hmm. um but you've got to draw the line somewhere um you you ask about from a production standpoint when you go beyond 350 pages these books get exponentially harder to put together right. the roland book was 400 pages and we sort of shook hands and decided <laughs> we were never doing that again um, so there's just so much material, so many 
patches and pictures and research and interviews. Joe has been working on this book for well over a decade. Mm. And there's so much there and just not all of it can go in. So yeah, yeah Bukes Club is going to be the place where people can get regular updates with added stuff, not only for that book, for our, but for our other titles mm. as well. Um, making them all into sort of a a living experience. Um, the other thing I should mention, which hasn't come up yet very briefly, is that among the material we'll be sharing there, uh, Cornell University has a very big archive of Bob Moog's, uh, uh, everything from personal correspondence to ads, famous photographs, uh, all kinds of things. And both Joe and I went into those archives. I lived in there for a week just taking pictures, hundreds of pictures, wow. so that we could go back and scan some really good ones. And I'm just going to say, we've, we've got a schematic of the keyboard circuit for the Mini Moog that has Bob Moog's corrections to it written in his own handwriting in red ink. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, just holding this stuff, reading Bob's notebooks, it's just so extraordinary. And we're going to try to bring some of that across in this book because, you know, the man's life was amazing. But yeah. again, there's no way we can get all this stuff into the book. It's just yeah. impossible. So we're going to bring as much of it to you guys as we can in other ways. Fantastic. Yeah, great stuff. Um, I found that picture. Um, oh. There we go. Oh, oh, wow. yeah. Look at the there state it is. of that. Oh, yeah. So my first question is, I mean, obviously it's been gaffer taped and, I don't know, thrown around, burnt maybe. But what on earth is that screen on the far left-hand corner of the front panel? It is a three-digit readout, and I have no idea what it does. It's in a, a like a two-second blink-and-you-miss-it thing about Ultravox. And there's a picture, there's a oh, moment yes. of yeah. Midge Ure playing it. Is this Ultravox's one? Yeah, yeah, this is Ultravox's one, yeah. And it, I, it, it, I think Jason Ribello bought it in the end. And he said, please, God, just make it all work, but do not change a thing. I went, yeah, fine. I don't fancy rubbing that case down anyway. <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like old work. Yeah. I, but uh, for love nor money, I couldn't get the frequency counter to work. Oh, wow. So, yeah, because that's is that what's on the far left? And then there's this three digit display in the mixer panel there, isn't that? Is like a, an, an LED. Yeah, that, well, that's that's what I couldn't get working. Oh, okay, that, right. It the, would not work. It it's a tuning reference, right? Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff. And then you but just yeah. got all the marks for all the different, you know, different tracks in the set. Oh, boy, are there a lot of pieces of tape in this book. Yeah. Pieces of tape, <laughs> yeah. markers, and stuff scribbled in handwriting. <laughs> there was actually a question in the chat that kind of leads on to that. Um, uh, yeah, it was Peter James Stevens says, will, will there be uh, uh, patch sheets, not part sheets, or well, there may be some part sheets, but patch sheets in the book with famous sounds for us to recreate on however we do our mini Moogs? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, there were, depend, yes. Depending yeah. on how your um, mini Moog is set up. Of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and get your ballpark. Yeah, get your ballpark. I can say that uh, so so far we're working with Isabella Donna to to recreate oh, some uh, well over thirty sounds, and uh, also we are putting together. We have put it, been putting together a, a Spotify playlist and a YouTube playlist of of tracks that relate nice. to the book and beyond. Also, so yeah, for us it's it's about you know making this uh, alive. You know, mm. being a more you know, it's not just a visual experience in the book, but but kind of a more whole experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I should. There's a ch uh, question that just went by in the chat from Howard Scar. Hi, Howard. Love oh, you. Oh, Howie. Um, he asked the the center display, Kent, on that Ultravox Mini is the frequency counter, right, for for tuning. What's the the LCD display over on the left in the modulation <sighs> section? Do you, do, you have, what, do you have any I've, to remember? I'm trying to remember. God. I know it ran off a PP3 battery that was tucked away inside. <laughs> Would you believe? Um, it's like an egg timer or something. Oh, God, <laughs> mate. I took the back off that and everything just went <laughs> and fell out. <laughs> just wires everywhere. Like, oh, yeah, God. but it, it meant nothing to you. 
I oh, you know what, I, oh, oh. Stop it. Stop it already. Um, <laughs> no, I, for the life of me, I, I can't, unless it was because one frequency counter wasn't working, they decided to fit another one mm. and see if that did it. And it was a, there was hundreds of switches. Um, well, you can see there's toggle switches on, on yeah. the, um, the left-hand side. And once it was open, it was just, just a toggle switch. There was no wires connected to it. You know? it <laughs> it's seen better days, you know. Wow. So oh, it's modded, 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 move on, mod, mod again, yeah, mod, yeah. mod backwards, mod forwards, and you know, all over yeah. the place. <laughs> Lovely stuff. I mean, some, some of these examples that you've got, I mean, the, the finish on that is, is gorgeous. Look at that. That's, that's a Kent job right there. Well, the thing is, Ooh. it was round about 2005, suddenly it was just the thing to do. Mm. And people were just digging their minis out of cupboards and stuff like that. They just wanted them to, I think the prices of them rising helped a, a great yeah. deal. Um, but people started falling in love with their, with their minis again, uh, you, know, you know, to use, you know, every day. Yeah, we uh, we have interviews with quite a few people like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Now there's that, one, there's one, one on there one? with white switches. No, there's but there's one outside. Now see that one. Oh wow! That that is number twenty three. <laughs> that one. All right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and when we put that up for uh, sale through through RL Music, uh, we got an email from a guy saying, "Oh, it's not original. It's not original." Because all those switches in the centre should be blue and all this sort of thing, and um, <laughs> did a bit of research on it. And I can't remember somebody I spoke to, and they said, "Oh, well, there was a bit of you know, um, we couldn't always get the the switches in the colour we wanted, so it's what what was ever in mm. <laughs> in the workshop at the time." So I tried to convince that. Yeah. So and it was convincing this guy that no, there are variants of yeah. minis it's billions of variants of of minis well it's a, you know? it was a different time for making synthesizers because they were pretty much hand built and it w was low volume uh, as opposed to today where things are just churned out of a factory and you you know yeah. you, you back order all those components ahead of um of production so yeah when you say low volume are you say are you suggesting there's something wrong with the vca Longhurst. Every show we have to do it. Every show. There has to be one. Penguin. Go for it. Where everybody just Shocking. stares at the ceiling yeah. like this. That's it. Yeah. We wonder where Andrew's sense of humour went. <laughs> and if it can and if it can stay the there, maybe the at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. so right, away. Let, let's get down. So we we've got about fifty minutes left. Um and uh, probably got loads of people uh, wanting to ask questions which we will get to i promise um ba -ba -ba -ba. so i want to go to kim because you're the business brain here uh, as well as the creative brain but um i want to, to talk about the kickstarter um uh, mm -hmm. when's it likely to start and uh what can we expect in terms of because obviously with the kickstarter um there isn't just you know a single option most of the time there are different options to increase engagement and of course you know money to, to help get the the book completed so tell us a little bit about the the kickstarter and what we can expect and um when when we might expect it yeah yeah you might expect it you will expect it later or you can expect it i don't know I'm <laughs> this month. Uh. So I'd say that, um, you know, we, we don't, there's a thing about Kickstarter, you have to get your project approved. And mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're pretty far in, in um, describing it on, on the site. So but we expect to maybe at least for a week from now, we expect to announce a, a specific date, cool. at least and then we will, if you signed up, you also get the time, so that you can be first in line for our early bird offer. Okay. But but it, it's always you know you have to push the button manual manually and we don't want to you know announce something that later gets changed. We, we want to be 100 percent sure that we have the date right. Then. Yeah. So, so and is this that. your first Kickstarter campaign? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> actually not. Maybe people who know Bukes from from only from recent years. But actually, we did we did our last one five years back when my first book and our second book I did with Chris. You know, uh, Patch and Tweak. Uh, and pedal crush. And, and our pedal first crush three was titles. Started. Our first three titles Those were, were done on, on Kickstarter. Yes, they were funded, and you know that's something that I'm 
that's something I'm really grateful for. You know, without people backing us like this, we couldn't have, we couldn't do what we do. And for me, I do this full time. This is my full time job uh, and full night job sometimes. Um, <laughs> and it's so important that 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 there are enthusiasts like like us out there that that support these uh, publications. Otherwise, we, it's an independent publishing company. You're looking at my office, and. Yeah. Um, you know, it's um, it's so important that the people back us. Uh, and for this, I have to say, this is our most expensive production yet. Uh, I, Mike and I always joke about that. I say, oh, this this looks like it's going to be an easy one. And it, it never- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Every, you also- know, we curse ourselves. We curse ourselves because yeah. every time it's like, oh, this isn't going to be as bad as the last one. Uh, uh-huh. 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 But, but in this uh-huh. case, yeah. in this case, it's it's photograph rights. We, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, and clear, you know, that's it, it's insane. Yeah. But I also have to say, as, as I said, uh, I spent a week going with the photographer of Synth Gems, which you see here behind me, uh, mm-hmm. Peter Ma. We went to, I went to him, visit him in Switzerland. It took me 17 hours to drive there. Then we drove another eight hours to Austria to photograph, only to photograph the 1001 model. Wow. Production model. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's the kind of thing we put into yeah. this. And it's simply because I don't, you know, I don't want to back down. This is so important that we get this right, and you know, for future generations, and also for us, all, all people that love the mini mog and the, the music history and all that. So yeah. I just want to do this as well as we can. And I, and Joe has spent a lot of time with with Brian, the photographer in the U.S. in Asheville, with Michelle and and the foundation to photograph uh, mini mogs there, both Voyagers and and Model Ds, and you know, the prototypes at EMF and all that. So so yeah. It's it's been a lot already, and we still have the printing and further licensing of photos to do. So that's why the Kickstarter is super important for us. Okay. And I think it's also a great way to to have people, you know, become part of of uh, materializing something. Yeah, it's a journey, um, isn't it? It definitely, definitely, it's been a journey. Actually, <laughs> I I just saw that it's two years back since I uh, signed the contract with Joe on this project. So so it's been wow. a Bukes project for two, and we didn't release anything uh, last year. Uh, we're mm-hmm. working on this, um, and yeah. we are all we we have great support from the foundations and the museums, like in yeah. in, in providing material and time for us, and the, also yeah, Bob Moog Music Foundation actually. has the yeah. Bob Moog Foundation has been fantastic, yeah, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Mm. So so in terms of the Kickstarter, Rob, which you asked about, um, mm. you know we have what we know that people like, especially in the UK, I think is a good price. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a good price. We we usually do the the the, the best prices when you get in early, mm-hmm. uh, and and then hopefully we get funded fast because then when people know it's a project, okay, it's actually funded, then we're okay with supporting it. Yeah, people, you know, deal with this Kickstarter thing differently. I think it's much more a thing today. I see usually there's a one or two, you know, music tech projects on Kickstarter a month. Uh, this new touch controller, the French guys who did that was just funded with, uh, you know, a lot of units on Kickstarter. And mm-hmm. So people are more used to it now. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, but I'd say, you know, we, we're not doing a special version for people that get in early, only a special price. Special price, but, gotcha. Yes. So so the, the faster you get in, the, 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 the better the price, if you can say so. We Absolutely. hope that people will support anyway. You can always put extra money, of course. Of course, us, you know, <laughs> and uh, so, and then we. But one thing we do that will not, you know, if everything goes well, when it goes well, we will publish the book um, for real, if you can say so, in September. September ish is the plan, and um, mm-hmm. that would be uh, what I call the normal version. The okay. Kickstarter version will only be for Kickstarter back, and that will each book in the Kickstarter version will have a unique serial number on the back. And a special dust jacket cover. Oh wow! And also, we have a stretch goal so that uh, if we reach a certain number of backers, uh, people will get three months free club access, uh, basically nice. the rest of the year from when it launches. Nice. So that's that's what we hope. And if people have any great ideas for other stuff, we will gladly, uh, you know, listen. But we try to make it as simple as possible. Um, yeah. We might do the name in book as we've done on previous Kickstarters. Uh-huh. If you you know pay a, a bit more, a lot more, 
you get your name in the book. Uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, it really oh, depends. For some people, it's important, and it's kind of oh, a yeah. sponsor thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's it's, it's yeah. it happens yeah. everywhere, doesn't it? Whether it's it um, does, yeah. you know books or or videos or you know documentaries, you know, just people are quite happy to just as long as my name's in the credits at the end. I, I can, you know, it, you feel an, an attachment to it, and that that makes it special, mm-hmm. doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to say thank you to everybody that is listening already, and everybody in the chat uh, to this project. I mean, Joe, I don't know how Joe feels right now, but you know, tired. Joe wrote to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe, you wrote to me Wednesday when we kind of had announced it. You know, you wrote to me. I guess this is the point of no return. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it, it, I guess it it is for us, but it, it's say- been a long journey for you, especially. Joe, do you feel validated now that you know there is obviously is a big level of interest in this? Is now it's going to happen? It's you know as you say it's the point of no return. Do you feel a sense of validation and and joy at this? <laughs> More like relief. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I think you can, you can't see it just because the way my camera's set up, but you know Kim has this remote control button on me that uh, my shackle. <laughs> doesn't get released until i've written 1500 words a day and then i can i can get up and go about yeah. my business. you're not supposed to talk yeah. about the that. shackle yeah i mean you it's, it's been said um that you've been working on, not necessarily on the book but on the material that, that we'll see in the book for a, for a decade more what, <laughs> more what sorry. was sorry, what was sorry. the I sing the body electric said validated the man should be ordained. <laughs> this is true. What um what was your original goal for all of this, you know, for putting it together? Was it simply I need to document these people, these stories and I'll maybe put something out later or or think about you. Know, I just need to get this stuff down before these people drop off this mortal coil or what was the you know, what was the real initial motivation? The initial motivation was to was to do a book. I mean, like I said okay. before, it was it was based around we were we we're coming very close to the 40th anniversary. We wanted to get something done, um, and a lot of the people that uh, <laughs> it's from you know, um, <laughs> uh, a lot of the people that I did speak to ha- have since passed away. So I consider myself very fortunate. Um, you know, one of the things that that among the several dozen regrets I have in my journalistic career is that um, I did get to meet Bob once and and to talk to him about, um, uh, you know, Minimo's and, and the history of, of the company. And I really wish that, but at the time, I, I didn't know anywhere near the amount that I do now about just the instrument and the history. And I just wish that I would have been able to uh, bring the current 21st version of 21st century version of myself back to that moment so that I <laughs> so many questions that have gone unanswered but um, but yeah originally we we're just trying to, to to put out something that that hadn't been done before and just as a huge synthesizer geek I just thought it would be a, a, a great thing to to have out there yeah absolutely um, so the Kickstarter we should hopefully see in a week or two is that what we're, we're kind yeah, of looking yeah, at? Yeah, a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. yeah, within a couple so, of weeks. Of and, of course, the, the best way to keep informed is to go to the Bukes website and fill out so this page. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least if you if you want to be first in line. Yeah, who won't? absolutely, yeah. Well, indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, will you, I would say before, just uh, will you be taking this book on the road? Are, are we going to see you at maybe Synthfest oh, yes. in Sheffield with this? and? Uh, we are already going to be in uh, at Super Booth. Actually, we're going to show a preview. Awesome. Uh, we oh. usually do a little uh, soft cover version with the pages produced so far. Oh yes, and that's even when the Kickstarter probably is still going on. Yeah, and, yeah, we'll uh, be, so we'll be there. We'll be there, and then we'll be at Synthfest also. Machina Bristronica will be oh, there. So, uh, um, wow, we're going to see each other a also, lot this year. <laughs> yeah, great, great. I'll bring the beer. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> and also. <laughs> Um, we're probably going to have a mini Moog Model D, and uh, I might bring the Voyager XL I have here behind me, which is actually nice. also featured in the book. Unfortunately, I had to buy that for for getting it photographed for the book. But that was, <laughs> oh, that's uh, sure. and now he's stuck, a, he's stuck with a he's stuck with a Voyager XL. Boo! Oh, yeah, I was yeah. close to selling it again, actually. But um, <laughs> you know, that's Don't that's you dare. If, 
depending on how the Kickstarter goes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, sorry, just just quickly, yeah, you know, we were we were looking at the um, a photograph of the uh, model twenty three, was it number twenty zero number twenty three with the yep. white switches? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Michelle posted this she did. about it. Mm. So they yeah. use any switches. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I was trying to convince the buyer of that, but he was an idiot. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Also, Michelle. Um, I mean, yeah, um, Michelle being the font of all Moog uh, knowledge, um, who is a wonderful supporter of our show, and um, we love you deeply and we miss you. Um, we haven't seen you for a little while, um, but uh, she also put up here because uh, there was a question from Ben, actually, our, our one of our moderators. How many minis did they make in the end? And of course, she. Th there's yeah. the exact number 12,269 uh, in, in a 12 year period and 210 RA mini mogs. 12,206. She, she's yeah. a bit special, isn't she? And, yeah. and Bob thought they'd sell 200, maybe. Yeah. 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 What did he know? Hey, <laughs> what, what did he know? <laughs> oh, fantastic stuff. Um, <coughs> thank you, Michelle. Thank you for your support. Thanks for dropping in and, uh, and answering I must these admit, questions. she still hasn't answered my uh, proposal of marriage. Oof. And with good reason. Yeah. Because, no, I keep because asking she, her. I know she yeah, hasn't accepted mine yet. Something to do with me keep calling uh, Michelle Moog. I think it, I think that's what it is. <laughs> you like to live dangerously, don't you? I know. <laughs> you like to live very dangerously. Um, I'm I, I understand that because um, I think the last time Michelle and I hung out was at Superbooth last year. Mm. Uh, we went out. Um, Craig, uh, who was also in the chat, Craig Frustachi uh, from the from the foundation. Um, we we went out for dinner and we had lots of laughs and giggles with the um, the street entertainment, shall we say? Um, we had you um, on the show. You, we did a show, didn't we? Kent and I did a show, mm. and you came on it with her. Oh yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. We, yeah. Like life from Berlin. Life um, from Berlin, which is not a phrase you, you often want to hear. Um, so <laughs> let's let's go through some of the questions here. Um, we've done the how many mini mogs. Um, oh, this isn't a question so much. Jim Hughes uh, in the chat says my mini is sixty one ten, bought in the nineties for five hundred dollars. Look at that. That was that was when you needed to buy them. Um, Ron Wild asks, "Did you try to research how many vintage minis out of the uh, CA thirteen or, or, or circa thirteen thousand? Well, we know now it's twelve thousand two hundred sixty nine are alive and still in use. Um, it's a hard one, but maybe interesting to know. Do we have any idea how many? Or you know, how, And what I said to him in chat was, <laughs> "How would we start?" Yeah, this is true. <laughs> These I know that I know for sure there's two and a half thousand of them that weren't that are now. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you, Kent. We yeah. love you. I, I, you I like the money as well. <laughs> Keeping <laughs> mini modes alive. Okay. Um, Got my Mustang. Yeah. James Dyson, who um, we mentioned earlier, he was the, the generous um, donator of um, the GX80 Sandbank that you can get in our Patreon page, mm. um, asks, will there be a bundle in the uh, the Kickstarter, including the latest book? So I'm, I'm guessing James is saying, you know, could he maybe get mm. two or three other Bukes publications with this one at a special price? If we have anything left, we probably have. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> there's actually this, there's, uh, the short answer is yes, there's this new thing that Kickstarter has done that is called add-ons. Yes. So oh, okay. you you pledge for the book, and then you can choose uh, a selection of our books as add-ons for a good price. Also, nice, mm, cool, nice. That's, we want to you know make it possible for people to just you know yep. and if you get buy... what they want, and hopefully you know we need the support. So yep. whatever yeah. works, buy seven, get one for just one penny. <laughs> <laughs> not buy seven, get one full no. price. I, I promise that I did not prompt this next question at all. I, uh -huh. I swear, I promise I did not. Uh -huh. um, but Steve <laughs> wants to know, will there be a DX7 book, or is there one already, and has he missed it? Oh, my, I will funny. not edit it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it, Kim. I'll do it. I'm sure that's I'm cheating great. the mic. That's great to know, Rob, because actually I like the DX7. Um, Mike and I have Kudos. been debating it since it wasn't push turn move actually, and uh, really, yeah, yeah. It's, I like it, the DX7. It's part of my upbringing also. I would, well, I would never sneer at the history and importance of FM synthesis ever. I've owned three, four, five FM synths throughout my career. I just think the DX7 looks like a turd. 
And um, it's all right, darling. Don't worry. Um, and I thought he I was. I'd get that checked out if I was you, Mike. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, it kind of brings me to a point because um, I, I can't remember wh- when I was asked this, but the, somebody said to me, "What do you? What would you class as truly iconic synthesizers?" And yeah, Heather is on there. Well, I was. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, the first one is obviously Mini Moog. Uh, yes, yes, the CS80. <laughs> yes, right, the CS80. But I would also say that as 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 an iconic and important synth that that changed the direction had an impact on the music that was being made. The Mini Moog is certainly, you know, one of those. Oh, the huge. DX7 has yes. to be, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, I knew it I'd be changed. able to shoehorn her in somewhere. It, it absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there, I talk about it in the book with the DX1. In the DX1 article, I talk about mm-hmm. how the whole process of creating sounds changed. Because yeah. th- that's where sound libraries came from. The yeah. DX7 came out, nobody knew how to program it, and suddenly people made money selling sounds for it. Yeah. Um, it that's one change. Yeah. You know, the fact that it didn't sound like anything else and was relatively affordable. Um, you know, people yeah. who were sick and tired of hauling around a, a, a Mo, uh, you know, a Rhodes 88 satellite yeah. suddenly didn't have to. And also, um, as Ben points out, it double the the Mini Moog doubles well with the DX7. There are loads of examples. Yeah, yeah it does. Of yeah. of great songs where the bass line is uh, a, a, a Mini Moog yep. and a DX7. You know, Pet Shop Boys, for example, Scritti Politti. Dave Gamson was a huge fan of doubling up, um, whether it's a DX7 or a TX. Well, sonically, they didn't walk on each, exactly. each other. The DX7 yeah. gave the the, the it was a compliment. Yeah, the, yeah, that sort of front edge, and then mm. the Minimo gave the body. You know, it was, yeah. they're, they're great complementary synthesizers. Yeah. I just need a Minimo to go with mine now. If anybody's got one for sale, <laughs> let me know. Um, know. know how know. come it's, it's over... Denmark, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the one that Gary Newman signed is, is for sale in Denmark. Oh, really? There you go. I yeah. can send it to you if you... I yeah, give you your, your, could. my account number later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, it's over 50 years later. We're still waiting for a Mini Moog Model E to come out. The Welsh Mini Moogs were called the Model E. Were they really? Yes. Tiny, I did not Tiny know that. Evans, Tiny Evans bought the very last one that he ever built. And he got it from a little old lady who said, oh, I've got a Moogie. A Moogie. I've got a Moogie. Yeah. And he couldn't figure out what she meant, and it was a Moog E. But yeah, the the oh, of course, Moog E, yeah, yeah, it was a Moog E. So yeah. um, I, I I'm I'm sure I'm being really yes. dense, uh, Howard. There is a there are there will be pictures of the one at Emmy App. They've got a Love beautiful it. one. So so I'm going to ask the dense question, which I'm sure others may all your also questions be are dense. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, what, why is Mike here? Um, but the other question I was going to ask was, I've never heard until today of the Welsh Moog. Really? What, what, yeah, I've never heard. Where, where of were it. you? What carpet well, have you been living under? Well, exactly. So wow. it's parked under a Land Rover. So <laughs> just, give me a, just give me a quick, give me a quick. What, what, what's yeah, that Joe, about? Joe, tell us about the Welsh ones. Well, I, I'm. I, that that's one of those that I don't know as, probably as much as I, I should, but I, I think basically that had something to do with the copyright shifting hands or the mm. the, the, mm. the trademark, I guess, is okay. shifting hands, and they were and they they started to get built, and they maybe they were advertised in a magazine, and they didn't quite get as much traction as they they thought they would, so there weren't that many made, and then the the company went bust am, am i getting that right i think that's yeah, yeah it's pretty much I, along those yeah. lines yeah, yeah. That, they yeah. were all so awful <laughs> <laughs> no honestly okay. yeah no I'm, no I'm sorry it but they they were like ugh. yeah yeah well well you know it's interesting because they have one at emmy app and the 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 head honcho at emmy app vince pupillo uh they've got over 20 of them in there they've got a mini moog room it's just mm. like you walk in and you're like ah! <laughs> but um <laughs> the uh the i i asked him actually i said which ones do you personally like best and he said actually our our moog e is actually quite good sounding um mm-hmm. so you know uh but they they were 
you're not kidding about the fact that they were slapped together with whatever yeah. whatever cabinetry they had. So you do get things like a Model E that, that the bottom panel sticks out forward. So you've got a place in front of the keys to put your yeah. hot dog. Yeah. You know? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. They were, they were the circular thing that musicians yeah. enjoy. They were well, maybe I should clarify because from a sonic point of view, they were going to they they they're, they're similar because um, the, they just redid the boards like the old boards. It was just the way it was built, the materials used, made it very sort of like just not very mini you know? I mean, mm. so if, that, if, that if, it was, of, if it was from Wales. Which has lots of sheep, shouldn't it be the steady mag <laughs> rather no. than the moog? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Why does he <laughs> do this? I don't Andrew, know. Andrew Why do we Darling, let him? Don't peak too early. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> All our Welsh viewers have just left in yeah. a huff. Jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> Good to see you here, lovely boys. Indeed. <laughs> um. Oscillator from the valley, see. Well, it um, could have been the you know the, the Irish mini mug would have the keyboard on the back. Trust Ben to obviously come. With. Ben Ben is the um, the curator and the owner of uh, the wonderful Museums website, and we were talking about this just uh, before we came on air. And everyone in this room, including Joe and Kim and Mike, uh, mm. cited Ben's uh, website as a, uh, a hugely uh, helpful resource. Um, yeah. So you know, uh, if you haven't been already, I love you, Ben. There you go. Um, but. Of course, he's dug up the link to the Sound on Sound uh, review of the, the Mini Moog 204E, which is there. So um, it's there on Sound on Sound, and you probably find lots more on, on the wonderful Museums website. So uh, go ahead and fill your boots there. Um, Jason Crouch wants to know, does the book cover the latter stages of its custom mod developments, i.e. studio electronics? Some people mention them in their interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still trying to decide. There are a lot of possibilities here with respect to mods and later releases like the Midi Mini, which was, which was in fact a butchered real Mini Moog put in a rack case with Midi. Um, we're still determining how much of that is going to go into the book, but there will be some. Mm -hmm. What about um, Mini Moogs for those that either can't find or can't afford a real one. You know, we ha we have lots and lots of options from you know hardware versions to software versions. Are you covering anything like that in the book? You know, mm. you've just read this you know three four hundred page book about the Mini Moog. How how do you get that sound? You know, today. That's some of the things that uh, we actually. Joe has also interviewed people at Moog Music working with the new digital versions like the ipad okay. version ios yeah, yeah. version and so that's in there but we're not covering any clones if that's what you're hinting at um no, no. again there's there's yeah. definitely some there's stuff we want to use space for in the book printing mm -hmm. and then there's stuff that doesn't need to be in the book really but sure. maybe it's better to have links to because you know we don't we don't know what's going away in a half a year from now that's or, true or a year from now yeah. so this is that's also one thing that's I think is super interesting for us at Bukes to do is this very historical view, but also focusing on this one since that just you know it took off from there. It inspired many other synths also, mm. uh, synth makers. Um, so so there's that story too. Yeah. And in terms of mods, we are trying to to break it down, but we will have hopefully we can maybe even release uh, you know a Model D app uh, sound set for example. But there are classic sound sets already. Um, but I think it's it's mostly about the original, you know, versions and, and then the modifications. We're going to have an overview of the, the most popular modifications, maybe some weird ones too. Yeah. But um, again, we're trying to, to create a, how do you say, a clear overview of, of as much of this as we can. Because, you know, people have bits and pieces of, of this whole story. Uh, and I need, maybe. I need to mention there's a big chunk of this book about the Voyagers. Mm -hmm. mm. we've barely talked about that but the the voyagers we give a really nice history there's a there's a beautiful story about how they came together and we've got some amazing photographs uh of a lot of the, the custom models and uh some special surprises i'm not going to tell anybody about mm. that are that are voyager related nice. so it's it's you know 
no, it's nowhere near as iconic as the original, but it's an amazing machine. Mm. And we we give it love. We really Good. do. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a chapter in the story for sure. Uh, for sure. Um, I was just wondering, we, we, we've spoken about Michelle and the Bob Moog Foundation and the Moog Museum and how they have been um, really helpful in you know putting the... You know, giving you information for the book and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, is it sensitive for me to ask whether the current incarnation of Moog music, whether it was before or after the event, um, has had any um, input on this or have they assisted you in any way? It's fine you ask, Robbie. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, as I said, we've been working on this for two years with, with Bukes and, and, and you can guess at that time, during that time, uh, the acquisition happened uh, from in music, right? So, so obviously, communication lines change a bit. Uh, the people we talk to, mm -hmm. but uh, basically, they've been super helpful in okay. um, in providing photos and also interview contact with some artists and some uh, uh, some engineers. Also, uh, some of them still there. Also, so uh, and then now it's it's. I guess it's part of the story. We we also yeah. we you know Joe yeah. Joe tells the story up to the reissues, also the latest reissue in twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah. So so you you kind of get the full story as far as we can go. Yeah, yeah, as far as you can go. Yeah. Um, I want, I want to ask a question of the three of you, and I'll come to each of you in turn. Um, Moog synthesizers are inexorably linked with the founder. Um, you know. Bob and I wanted to know from each of you, and I'll start with you, Joe, if I may. Um, what did you learn about Bob Moog, the man, by doing the research and the writing for the book that you didn't know before? Maybe I, I guess I, especially when I went to Cornell and got a chance to dig through the archive. You, you know, the one thing that 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 just jumps out because you're able to look at some of you know bob's notepads and things like that just the immense dedication that he had to artists and and the way that he would go out of his way uh just to make extra efforts special considerations for the people that he was uh creating these instruments for i mean it's just it, it's just staggering to see how much of himself he put into those relationships considering that you know he was running this business that was recognized around the world as being such as a leader of uh, of a new technology so that's that's the thing that i the, that i took away from it yeah uh, kim uh, what did you learn about the man that you maybe didn't know before or that you now admire him so much you know more for than you maybe did it's a really hard question for me because I there's so much to admire him for I think and mm. and I just picked up this from my from myself because this oh, is yes. the ultimate book about Bob himself I, I think yeah. and that this is what we are not trying to do with the Minimo book mm -hmm. um, but for me what became very apparent in both the, the story before the proto or with the prototypes and leading up to the Model D and also with the Voyagers was obviously this whole and I think that's interesting also the business decisions to make or the challenges, you know, um, and it, I was really touched by the this whole story when he regains the rights to to, to the name. Also, yeah. uh, being an independent, you know, also for myself, <laughs> you know, creator, it's really, you know, it really touched me. I was really, you know, struck by it, and I was like, wow, yeah, you know, it's it's not easy, not even today, but at that time also to have these these ideas and this innovative mm -hmm. mindset and try to do these things. And then also what struck me was really the way he finally listened to to, uh, to Bill and Jim and, and other people, um, David from Covering, um, with this mini moak. You know, it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of credit, I think, to be able to, as a, as a, the business owner, take that decision and say, okay, let's do it. I don't believe it's going to be more than 200, but let's do it. You know, yeah, that's a decision I have a lot of respect for. Absolutely. And of course, finally to to Mike. I mean, you're you're an incredibly learned man within you know th this realm. Um, probably know most of what there is to know about Doctor Bob. But I um, would never 
claim that. No, really. But what, but what did you? What did what, I? What took okay. you the most by surprise? Well, Joe only met Bob once. I don't know if Kim ever met Bob. Um, I oh. would never have the temerity to call myself Bob's friend. But we spoke a number of times over the years when I was the editor at Recording Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I had immense respect for the man. Uh, as for something brand new that I learned in, um, in researching and editing the book, I'd say the thing that sticks with me most is that he had absolutely no problem stinking up his kitchen uh, using the family <laughs> oven to cook touch plates. <laughs> that he was building that he was building for big briar in the 90s uh michelle oh, tells wow. that story and you know she'd come home and it would smell like something had died and she asked her mom what was going on and her mom would shrug and say dad's baking touch plates again <laughs> so he was a very down-to-earth man and um just a uh, I wish I had known him better. I so wish I had known him better. My memories of him are so few and so fond. There's actually, there was a party in LA for one of the trade shows uh, that we were invited to. And um, there's a picture somewhere of, you know, they were playing music and Bob was, you know, enjoying himself. And there's a picture of him dancing <laughs> with Don Buchla. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm East Meets West, and I'm just yeah. going. I'm just going. You know what are the odds? Um, he officiated at a wedding of two of my friends. They got married at Nam, and Bob was the officiant. He was just the, he. He had this sense of humor, and he, he was just. I I really regret not knowing him better. Um, what I said in his obituary when he died was, I have not lost Bob Moog. None of us have. But I'm going to miss talking to him. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I never had the pleasure, um, but I you know I sort of have had the pleasure of of meeting and talking with Michelle many times, and I get a sense of her father through her, because um, ev everything I hear about Bob, I think, yeah, that's Michelle. It's so, and, and 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 Michelle is doing sterling work, and I just want to. Um, yeah bring the attention to that just for a moment if we can at the Bob Moog Foundation. Um, oh, yes. This is just an incredible organization um, that Michelle and her team, uh, Craig and the rest of them, and Thane uh, MLH in the chat as well, I believe, and Bob Kihu and, and others, um, they all do sterling work and, um, and help out there. And I really need to go to the Moogseum, but it's just such a, a trip for us us um, island-bound Brits, but I will get there one day. I'm sure, uh, uh, everything we, I've seen, uh, you know, we've had little mini tours around it on the show as well. It's just fantastic. And, yeah, and Rob, when you when you go, let me know. I'll meet you there, and I'll take you to all the good bars. That all sound, all sounds very, very good. Um, but, yeah, uh, I don't know when there's uh, another raffle coming up, but th those are some of the uh, the most exciting moments of the year when – when the Bob Moog Foundation does one of their raffles, um, and we always try and get Michelle on or the pe the people that are behind the raffle. So we had Dominic Milano on when when they were raffling off uh, the Memory Moog, and we've had others since and before. Um, so yeah, whatever we can do, and of course, um, whilst we're here, we we need to also mention the other legendary uh, synth daughter that's in the room, um, Dina Perlman of the Alan R. Perlman Foundation, who's doing equally sterling Yay. work um, for that foundation Yay, uh, in her for, for father's 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 name. Um, so yeah, um, let's see. Uh, Pro synth Network, don't miss her question about the Donny Moog earlier. I I know I've missed that. I don't know. I apologize and I can't go through. There's so much to go through. I couldn't find it if I tried. Um so let's have a look at the time. We've got about fifteen minutes left. Um the there were a couple of things in the news this week that we I don't think we really need to go over. So I'm going I'm going to park those. So if you came here for for your news information um, this week, yeah, not so much. There's not a lot. Um, and we the the biggest news I think was the Arturia Astro Lab. Oh, I've got um, to say something about the Astro Lab. Go Kim on, then. Was go on. Freaking out. Go Kim on. was freaking out when Arturia said that they were going to do this big <laughs> announcement. Kim was like, <laughs> Kim, I, I don't know how he possibly 
could think that Arturia would say something that would take the wind out of this book announcement sale the next day. But Kim was abs- I had to calm him down. I had to peel him off the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> well, I think it well, all that's why turned out well. Yeah. <laughs> I think it all turned out well. I mean, we gave we gave two hours of exposure to you guys. We gave two hours of exposure to that, and 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 they've all gone on to um, to be just as popular. I think. I mean, the, the thing with the Astro Lab is um, it's an in, it's a really interesting thing. It's slightly different, and not everyone was expecting that and uh, it seems to have divided opinion somewhat and i've had it here now for a little while and, and i'm really enjoying it i'm kind of enjoying the focus that it gives me on certain types of of instrument but um yeah there's, there's lots of other stuff coming um down the line because it's their 25th birthday this year and um, they have big plans so watch this space is all i can say anyway back to um the bob Mo- sorry uh, the mini moog book um, let me just remind everyone where you can go to get all the information that you need. You just need to go to bukes.com and you'll find the link on the front page. Um, but there it is. And uh, right now, all you need to do, if you are interested in this book, which you ought to be by now, is just put in your name details and your email, tick the little consent box. Um, you can unsubscribe at any time, of course, um, but why would you? And you just uh, click the green button and you get signed up and then uh, you'll get all the information as soon as it comes out and uh, then we're looking at around a week or two's time before the kickstarter goes live and get in early you will get uh, as kim said um a, a if you're one of the really early ones you'll get a nice dust jacket with a limited edition number on the back which is really cool um so there you go make sure you go and visit there um quick shout out to andy synchrotron uh 10 pounds donation thank you very much indeed thank you for a great show tonight he says thank you for joining and thank you for uh for watching and contributing and if you want uh andy are you um doing a live stream tomorrow andy normally does these uh wonderful kind of modular synth uh live jams i guess uh on saturday morning at 10 uh, a.m uk time that um are very interesting not least because he's an also, also an excellent guitarist and so he starts putting uh, guitars on top of these lovely drones and, and arpeggiations and it's it's well worth the watch so if you um if you're around at 10 a.m uk time yep there you go it's confirmed uh give his channel a, a watch and a like and a subscribe if you will thank you very much uh, to tain mlh uh great show today thanks to the bukes team for this emerging book 20 bucks thank you very much indeed much appreciated and earlier in the show uh, our friend robert hecksh and uh, turned up and donated two pounds thank you very much he says hello to mike from hell i think that refers to the little conversation you were having on our facebook page the other day um, where you told uh, him to go to hell and i think well he's, he's saying hi uh <laughs> love you mr fat Oh, uh, hey, listen, he's the only one of this gang that's ever met uh, Mrs. Metley. Ooh. And um, he walked did, away shaking. Didn't I meet her at Superbooth? I don't think you did, because she no. never came to Superbooth. Oh, no, no, we ran into each other in the airport, and uh, he chatted with us for about five minutes. And when he walked away, he was trembling. Um, <laughs> and that was just from you? No. Oh, no, no, no. That's the Mrs. Anyway. Um, and thank you, Stephen, for your twenty dollars donation, uh, Australian dollars, no less. Thank you very much. Indeed. That's, that's thirty-seven pence. That is, yeah, <laughs> thirty-seven and a half. If you get in before midnight, yeah. um, there was a quick question from Katty that I missed. Uh, when will we know exactly who is in the book? Will there be a list on the Kickstarter page, Kim? There will be a list. It'll probably not be a full list. Uh, still, uh, we like to keep surprises in there, but okay. we'll mention those that we feel are very important. Um, 70 is also a lot, and it's, again, because some yeah. are interviews, some are features, but there's a lot of interviews. But already now you can see, I think you can get a sense of it on our social media stuff. We are going to post stuff, I uh, just think, yeah, in a few days we'll post some stuff around the artist. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, you, you, you sent a, me some screenshots yeah. here. So we've got Gary Newman, mm. we mentioned Jan Hammer, Tony Visconti, there's the Stranglers. Um, we've got Dr. Dre, we've got Daft Punk, we've got Tara Bush, um, and there's so many more that I couldn't fit in. Uh, and in, the in photographs one go there. are just stunning, aren't they? Oh, yeah, that's the one thing I mean, you get really, with a Butte's book. Really stunning. Yeah. Whilst, whilst we've got the time, and I know people will, will say, oh, you didn't ask when Synth Gems 2 is coming out. 
because that was for us i think was like oh, look at mike he's just like oh god they've asked that question um synth gems 2 is has he frozen no he's got always oh, gone to sleep was well, just switched off no um he's idle synth gems 1 <laughs> was was a brilliant book i mean all your your stuff is great but that is particular because i think it covers such a wide range and we've all got something in synth gems is is, is there okay. movement i'm taking this one go on then kim no, and i no, have been doing that. kim and i have been doing very <laughs> very early preparation for the book um my hope is that it will happen i don't know when we have already um there were some very good photo sessions from volume one that will appear in volume two uh i have already promised that there are going to be a couple of synthesizers that we will cover including the polymog when it happens i will not say it is That's going it is going to happen and kim and i are talking about methodology this these books uh, are before we even start heavy actual production work synth gems probably was more argued over and discussed and refined than any of the other bukes titles because there's so many ways so it could much. go wrong yeah and so many ways it could go wrong um so nobody should despair of there ever being a volume two but i want to be very careful about making any promises of course, of course. um Ben saying that Synth Gems One seems to be quite hard to get. Apparently, in the UK, is is there a limited it's, number of these, or do you do reprints? There shouldn't be. It really depends on the dealers. But you know, on our website, we all, we sell all over the world, and we have a fulfillment center in the UK, so they okay. ship uh, domestically, if you can say so. And so we, so we skip all of that. Yes, yeah, skip all of that. Yeah, you uh, can just order on we our website now. and just. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. There you go. And we, we paid we the taxes for you guys now that you're not part of the EU anymore. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. Um, I need to mention some other donations before we uh, crash out tonight. Uh, Lee Keeley, thank you very much. 20 Canadian dollars. Great show, everyone. Hoping Patrick Mraz will be in the book with his Mini and Voyager. There's just, yeah, just sort of non, you know, just, yeah, I, th I think that's a given. Uh, <laughs> New Mina Space. Ten dollars, thanks everyone. Look forward to the Buke. And... Numina Space, yeah. by the way, is Numina, uh, a New Age and uh, ambient artist in uh, Denver. Uh, my old friend Jesse Sola, uh, who is an amazing musician, look for his stuff online. And um, love you, Jess. Hug, there hug Kirsten go. for me. There we go. Um, so I think that kind of brings us towards the end of the show. We start saying goodbyes and, and wrapping up things now. Uh, we'll probably hit the. Uh, the hour mark quite nicely um gentlemen look it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on i thought we were just going to get kim and mike and that was going to be great as it was but joe um thank you for for popping your uh pro synth network cherry with us tonight we've really enjoyed um th this time with you um dare i ask once this has been put to bed and it's gone to the presses long break feet up or have you got something else lined up Yes, I'm going to learn how to play the lute, something oh. not electronic. Wow. There no, you I'm go. just kidding. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, have a, I have a radio program here in the States that I've oh, cool. been kind of neglecting. So okay. I, at some point I should probably do that. Look forward to that. Well, I can't wait to, to, to read your words and uh, gain all of this wonderful insight into um, the Minimog. So thank you uh, for, for the work uh, ahead yeah. of it coming out. Thank you very much indeed. We really, yeah. really appreciate it. Um, Mike, what's going on in your world? If um, You're still obviously working on this uh, for now. Um, anything else that you can tell well, us about? Before I talk about myself, I have to say to everybody who's here, thank you. Um, a lot of folks are new to the stream. They're, they're friends who came here because they were curious because I asked them to. I'm hoping they come back. I'm hoping that, yes, that this grows our time. community. Uh, people have been so generous. The one thing I will ask, especially for my friends in the music community, tell folks about this. This Kickstarter is very important. Yeah. And the more people we can get on board, there are wonderful things we'd like to do that will become more possible. So thank you all for being here and thank you all for your support of Bukes. 
Uh, as for my own stuff, you know, I'm, I did the product manual for the, you know, I'm still working for Arturia doing product mm -hmm. manuals and things like that. And, um, other than that, I'm doing my radio show every Tuesday night at, uh, 6 PM Pacific time. Yeah. Um, give it a plug. On, What's the name? Uh, radio spiral .net. There you go. And, uh, and if you can't make Tuesday nights at six Pacific come Wednesday night at six Pacific, which is a much better show that's done by Diana. Um, go. and other than that, just, you know, I love you guys. Thank you so much for having us and for being so kind. Um, and, uh, w this has been hard. This has been a really, really tricky book because th there is so much misinformation about there, uh, mm -hmm. out there about the mini, uh, people who claim that they, they know what really happened and they're <laughs> just talking out of there. Uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're trying to set the record straight and, the one thing that was not mentioned in detail is the fact that we've got interviews with the surviving members of the design team wow. that worked with Bob on building the mini they're in there and they talk about this stuff. So we're trying, we just want this book to be the best and yeah. your support means everything to us. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Kim, just to round things off, um, obviously you, you're still working on this. Have you got any, important engagements that you know photo shoots or things that you need to do before you're finished yeah definitely um there's a lot of stuff also for the after the kickstarter uh, or sorry after the release or at the mm. release for the club you know i won't leave oh, joe gosh. alone just yet uh, he has a really he has a really good podcast voice and okay. there are some recordings of interviews that we want to possibly also release in some form awesome. or another and so also I'm working on a little sample library. I got to sample some mini modes and mm. um, some other stuff. Uh, I, I've really, you know, I have to say for me now with this Voyager here behind me also, I've really been more musically inspired than I've been for a long time doing this book actually. Mm -hmm. And that's really also what I, what I really want to do with our books, you know, inspire people yeah. to create more music and to, to dive more into it. So, and so for me, this is, yeah, as I said, it's my full-time job. When we launched Wednesday, I went surfing afterwards because I needed a break. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the I, guy I, who I know surfs, what I'm gonna do. He surfs in the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> Seriously. A lot he, of lives, he lives near cold Hawaii, which is this incredible surfing spot in northern Denmark. And mm. he just goes out and he surfs. This guy's a Viking is what he is. Well, They're made of different when, when, stuff up there for sure. I have to say something. The Voyager Excel behind me, it's used in the Netflix series, The Viking Vikings, that's what it's called. Oh, it was right. used in that for some of that stuff. And that's that's I think that was one of the interesting things with the Voy uh, not the Voyagers, with the Minimogs in general we have in the book that you, you get all these stories about albums and songs. Yeah. Beyond to be wild. I love that. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I need a t shirt with that on. That's there you cool. go. Yeah. And I will <laughs> so, I will put in one tiny plug. Um the Moog Model D app, we're still deciding how these patch sheets are going to be done. I have argued that maybe screenshots from that app are the way to go. If you want to try the Mini Moog sound and get, get close to it, that is the cheapest point of entry. Yeah. Sure. Um, and so I just, you know, if you've got an iOS device, think about it. Hmm. That's all cool stuff um to kent and to andrew probably just dozed off there i think now look at them uh, <laughs> no get into that we get into that age it gets a bit you know no you see talking about minis it just keeps reminding me of my mum. oh i see yeah she's yeah. massive oh, yeah was massively into the mini it was ridiculous bless yeah but so you've got Cooper, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to finish off this mini mode that you were working on today yeah, I've got to finish her off tomorrow. Um, is that all cosmetic might... internally? It's all yeah, okay, no, yeah. we're just we're just down to the cosmetics now, right. and uh, all the keyboards rebushed and re-leveled, and everything else is done. So it's all all ready to rock and roll. Nice, so, good stuff. Mm, well, that'll keep you out of mischief for a, a little while at least. Well, it's only about an hour's worth of work no, left okay. on it. Pub tomorrow. Yeah, um, I was thinking about um, getting this Jam Tabba thing oh, God, sorted yeah. once and for all. Do you know that I might have to do the same thing, Kent? Get yeah, it's just got to be done. Yeah, it's just got to be done. We need to 
we need to figure it out, don't we? For sure, absolutely, for sure. Yes. And Mr. Longhurst, um, plans for the weekend apart from looking after Mr. Evans, which you should, you know, I'm sure you're doing. Yeah, Mr. Evans is going to be spelt rotten. We're going to have a big cuddle. Oh, and um, Jam Tabbering, I think it, it's time to have a look at that. So that's going to be yeah. a yeah. lot of tomorrow, I think. Just Jam Tabber stuff. Cool stuff. Definitely. Excellent stuff. Um, I can't remember what I'm doing. I'll tell you what, and I'm going to tease this now. So um, oh, we've yeah. got something special coming for our Patreon uh, subscribers and also our YouTube members. And so this this maybe will encourage you. Something is going to involve this little puppy. Uh, let's get the, the camera angle just right there. Ooh. So Ooh. this is the Kawaii <laughs> Pop Synth Module, the PHM. Oh, God. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. Lovely little uh, non-conformist uh, module. It wasn't a GM module at all. It had 200 sounds in here plus drum patterns and all sorts of things. There's going to be something special happening soon with this little baby. Um, yeah. That you'll you'll all enjoy, I hope. Um, so yeah, watch this space. I'm going to be trying to put uh, put some of that stuff together soon. Um, and other than that, there's lots of writing. There's there's things to write about in the music technology world. Um, and I'm going to try and spend a bit more time with my Astrolab. And that I think brings us very nicely to the end. Um, no, Kim, Surely Mike, not. Joe, thank you so much again. Um, on behalf thank of you, our Robert. audience, um, thank you for, for joining us. Thank, thank you for giving us the opportunity to allow us to support you in this way. It is always something we are always happy to do. Um, so always you know, consider us and drop us a line. Uh, if there's anything we can do, we will. And we wish you all the very best of success uh, with thank the you. book. I'm sure it will fly off the shelves quite literally um there, there's i don't think there's any doubt about it in my mind um and i can't wait to to give it a good look and i will see well i see at least two of you in about a month's time in Berlin. oh yes looking forward so, to it and listen forward, yeah. i'm getting there early so you and i are going to do some drinking i'm i'm there early too i'm there on, on wednesday and i'm there all the way through sunday wonderful so, well, uh, I'm out on I'm out early on Sunday because Monday is my 34th wedding anniversary, wow. and I would like to come home to something other than a frying pan and the kisser. Well, Mrs. So, Medley deserves a medal. Oh, tell me about it. Ask him. He's he's been a house guest here, living here for more than once, and he knows. Yeah, Joe, we, we, are you going to be doing any of the shows this year at all? Super Booth or Knobcon or? Well, no, because the chain isn't that long. So, okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excellent stuff gentlemen thank you ever so much and to everyone that's been watching today uh whether you're watching live thank you for for joining us as always thank you for your all of your all the donations um yeah. if you're watching on catch up thank you for coming back at whatever time you did uh we appreciate the fact that you you still seek us out even though we're not live and um don't forget there is the thanks button for those people um who are watching on catch up if you do want to make a donation but as i said at the top of the show the best way you can support this channel is to give us a like and a subscribe and sign up at our patreon page where you get lots of free stuff and we'll continue to bring more of of that um thank you everyone have a fantastic weekend um stay safe make lots of great music have fun uh enjoy um your families and your instruments and whatever it is that you do at the weekend uh, we cats. love you all and um, um we will see you um same time same place next week except gentlemen i won't be here because it's time for me to queue up outside a record store uh, yeah. in order to get my stuff on the Saturday morning. So um, we'll talk about that later, but you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Um, <clears throat> take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Love you.